Hello everyone and welcome back. In today's slightly off meta build, I'm going to show you how powerful a full ignition conditional finality build is when used appropriately. I am still playing around with what conditional finality can offer to players in both endgame and non endgame content, and right now it's showing its colours as a really powerful tool to use against a lot of endgame content combatants. The build I have is more off meta because of the nature of Caliban's hand. But with the following two combined, we can ignite targets and clear out much tougher enemies with little setup involved. I can also make it endgame worthy if we wish. If you use weapon ignite properties with solar subclass fragments, you can create quite a lethal combo, which is what I'm going to show you today. To start, you're going to want to have on your mark where position finder blows grant you and allies increased weapon handling and reload speed up to times 3. Then you'll want knock them down where blade barrage produces more projectiles upon use. While raging, final blows with throwing knives fully refund your melee. With how this setup is done, you can build into knock them down secondary effect so you can get back your melee consistently by retaining the raging effect. This of course will require you to slot in a fragment that offers that ability and this could also be helpful with further enhancing your weapon damage more as well. However, you can also add in the gunpowder gambler aspect for bigger explosions from the build itself. There isn't a must have aspect to use here overall, as mainly the fragments and mods will play a big part in how the build will work in the end, so choose what's best for you. We will also make full use of the seasonal mods such as Solar Surge, Flare Up and Rain of Fire Bolts for enhancing the firebolt grenades effect further. Looking into the fragments, Ember of Sindering, where class ability recharges faster upon scorching a target. Ember of Ashes, where you apply more scorch stacks to targets. Ember of Searing, where defeating scorch targets grant melee energy and creates fire sprite. Ember of Blistering, where defeating targets with solar ignitions grant grenade energy. And Ember of Shah, where your solar ignitions spread scorch onto other targets. With the fragments, we will rely on the method of building into our ignition blasts as much as possible as they will provide a huge benefit upon use of action. Ember of Ashes, Searing and Blistering, and of course Sharp, will all play a big part in granting us the needed energy to get our melee and grenades back so that we can create a nice and easy 1-2 punch via our abilities alone. However, this will also lean into our exotic weapon being used as well, as the ignition effect does benefit from our fragment of choice. So this means that Ember Blistering and Sha will feed back into Conditional Finality Solar Ignition Shot, which will grant us another easier way to trigger another Ignition Shot back to back. It's simply, if we coordinate our BAT properly, there we can get around two to even three Ignition Shots off on a single target, which can be devastating. For the mods and stats section, we're going to invest into Discipline and Strength as the main key stats. However, we don't need to fully worry about investing into strength stat by a lot because of how the setup is created. However, we don't need to fully worry about investing into strength stat by a lot because of how the setup is created. For investing in the discipline, a tier 7 to 10 is the ideal range to go for, as the firebolt grenades have a low cooldown rate upon the other choices provided. Now, you can either do what I do and try to max out the stat fully, so you don't need to worry about adding on the mods required to sustain it further. Or, you can get to around a tier 7 and use the font of discipline mod for that plus 30 towards your discipline stat as a cooldown. Ideally, my method will be relying on Ember Searing Fire Sprite creation and Ember Blistering Ignition effect to grant us grenade energy back easily, so in many ways you won't need to ever rely on the grenade mod to sustain the build further. A strength at tier 5 to 6 is also a good stopping point to aim for as Ember Searing effects will also help with getting the melee back fast. Considering that Caliban's will grant users melee energy back until the knife explodes, it will help with garnering energy back if we do miss our shot. In this case here, you want the following for supporting it further. Melee Kickstart for that small boost in melee energy return. Momentum Transfer for that grenade and melee combo. And Distribution for all ability energy return via class ability usage. With the correct setup as shown and utilising the fragments, we can get our melee back near instantly and without the need of additional aspects for further help, but the option is there if we decide to later. Considering the build is pretty self-sufficient within the subclass trait, you can invest into other key areas such as armor charge mods to sustain the build for long. Charged up times 2 is going to make sure we always have enough charge available to pull off our abilities, along with firepower and silver siphon for creating orbs on the way. 
With the shotgun being used, you can add on the stasis and solar siphon mod for increasing your shotgun's separate damage if you wish. The time dilation mod will help with extending the weapon's surge duration by an extra few seconds, and then having a special ammo finder and special finisher mod will further help with keeping our double secondary to float while in combat. Now lastly, the weapons being used will need to have incandescent on it so that we can create scorch from kills and also use it to trigger ignitions via grenades and melee. This will feed back into the many abilities we have that utilizes the scorch effects as a large, so anything is fine as long as it has incandescent on it. That said, the Conditional Finality Shotgun is a great weapon combo to have because of how its ignition blast leads back into our abilities. It can freeze on its first shot and then follow up with an ignition blast that can shred all targets within the area, and with just that alone, it can also do some hefty damage against a lot of combatants including bosses once you get those ignition blasts going. I would then of course recommend the Retrace Path Trace Rifle with Incandescent on it. This is a weapon you can still get and farm and is generally quite a powerful weapon to use when you get the right roll for it. Although my version is alright against most shield combatants, a version with substance would have been ideal as we keep those scorch damages up for longer. If you prefer to use a weapon where ammo isn't so much of an issue, then the BXR 55 or the Staccato 46 are also some good options to pick and use with incandescent built into them. So the conclusion of the build is that it's very similar to what we did a while back with the Titan Consecration build. This setup is all about building up those ignitions through our abilities and shotgun one after another and is great for clearing out a room in the most easiest way possible. No matter what content you have in mind, the build can clear obstacles with little effort when both your abilities and shotgun are at play, and is also pretty effective against mini bosses when you simply want to nuke their health and save it heavy for later. The success of the build will rely heavily on triggering scorch effects on the whole so that you can make full use of the end results once your melee or grenade is used to start the ignition process. Now in Gambit, Battlegrounds and even Nightfalls is where the build can do exceptionally well in, as the add density allows the build to really shine. Even in Legend to master story missions where I used it the most in is where the build really did well in, to a degree. So I didn't have much problems using this against bosses or mini bosses such as champions or tormentors who are known to be quite beefy in most content. And also using this in legendary content, it did as well as I expected it to do. Unlike the Consecration build, you can use this in higher tier content including GMs as you don't need to be out in the open to fully use it. Staying behind cover while having your abilities ready is easily a plus as you can use this as a quick way to dispatch a group of combatants when they have you hunkered down and unable to move. Even the shotgun has its pros with it being able to shut down combatants that get too close and is great for stopping the more aggressive types while in combat. It's quite an improvement to see the build actually usable in a lot more content because of the lack of elemental shields playing a big part in how effective your damage will be in most PvE content. Although it's more designed for content with vast enemy density, it has the room to expand even further if you desire. Overall, it's a fun and easy to use build that works really well with the new race shotgun. And that's really it. But what do you think? So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts on content shared then please leave a comment below, while at the same time if you enjoy the content and want more of these in the future, then leave a like on the server here. I will leave a dim link for the build below, and if you want more stuff like this then I have a playlist available covering all types of builds you desire. It was great sharing today's video with you all, I hope to see you again soon.